Finally ready to save our new employee to Firebase, let's jump right into it inside of our employee create action creator. Now we want to save something to Firebase. Anytime we want to work with Firebase in any way, shape, or form, we need to make sure that we import the Firebase library. So at the top of this file, I'm going to add an import statement to import Firebase from Firebase like so. Now here comes the fun part. <laughs> the fun part, so to speak. I'm going to clean up this console log right here. Uh, we know that the action creator is being called with the correct data, so I don't think we really need any more. Uh, this next part, like I said, quite fun with Firebase, depending on how you look at it. We're going to throw a little bit of code on here again, talk about what it's doing. I'm going to call firebase.database.ref, and I'm going to pass in a string. Users, user ID, employees. Okay. So this is a little bit of interesting code right here. This says, get access to our Firebase database, right? So like the location where you actually store our data, and then make a reference to users, user ID, employees. So this string right here is a little bit misleading because it looks like it might be a URL or something like that, right? Well, in fact, it is a path to our JSON data store. It is a path through the different JSON that we have. So remember our JSON data structure. We had said that we would have a top level collection of users and then a user ID and then a collection of employees. And so that is exactly what the string is doing right here. It is saying, find my collection of users, like find a key users, find a key of user ID, and then find a key of employees. Now the one kind of misleading part in here is I put just a hard-coded user ID in here. We don't actually want this to be a hard-coded user ID. We want this to be the user ID of the currently authenticated user, like the currently logged in user. That is what's going to give us, back over in our JSON schema, this intermediate key right here of like user123. We're going to use their ID as this intermediate key right here. Again, if this like data structure right here sounds really confusing, uh, as soon as we see this inside Firebase itself, I think it's going to make a lot more sense. So let's finish up with actually saving the data here, check it out inside of Firebase, and I think it's going to start to make a lot more sense. So we have to actually get used to or get access to the currently authenticated user in our application because we need their ID to shove in right here as the user ID. To get access to the currently authenticated user, we can call we can get our current user from firebase.auth, like so. So if we reference firebase.auth.current user, that's the currently authenticated user. It is our user model. And this current user object right here has a UID property, which is the ID of that current user, which is exactly what we need. So we need to take that current user's UID, or essentially their ID, and stuff it in in place of this user ID variable right here. To do that, we're going to use a little bit of template strings or string interpolation, depending on what you want to call it, which is a feature of ES6. So I'm going to find my single quotes on either side of the string. I'm going to delete it on both sides. And I'm going to replace them with backticks. So backticks are the button on your keyboard that is to the left of the one. So you're going to want to end up with a backtick right here. Then we want to inject that ID in place of this user ID right here. So I'm going to remove user ID and then replace it with dollar sign curly brace. And then again, this is a part of ES6. Any JavaScript variable that we place inside of here is going to be injected into the string and we're gonna end up with like the fully qualified string of user slash user ID, whatever it might be, like user123 slash employees. So inside of here, we'll put current user dot UID. Boom, that's it. So just to be really clear, the final product of that string right there would end up being something that looks like, you know, users, one, two, three, four, five, six, slash employees. Like that, that is the final result of that string. Okay, after we get a reference to this path right here on Firebase, this is just like a reference to a very specific location in our data store, we want to actually take some operation on that reference. We want to actually like do something at this point in time. To add new data to this little slice of our Firebase data store, 
we can call the dot push method on that reference. So dot push, we can pass it an object, and then anything inside of here will be saved to that reference or to this little spot inside our database. So we want to push inside of there a name, the phone number, and the shift. Okay. Okay, I think that we would probably be really well served to test this out at this point, uh, see what it looks like inside of our Firebase console, and I think it's really gonna help us out to figure out what's going on here. So I'm going to open up my simulator. I'm going to refresh, log in. Cool, and now we'll go to add I'm going to set Jane 555-5555. Uh, we can set a shift or we can just leave the default of Monday. That should definitely be functioning now. And then I'll go ahead and click Create. So we still get the big red error message on here, actions must be plain objects. Again, that is because we are not treating this like a proper action creator. You know, we are not returning actual action here. But uh, we should have at least made this request over to Firebase. So now I should be able to check my console and see if we've got any data. So I'll flip back over to my console, and immediately it looks like I've already gotten an update here. So I can now see on my root level, I've now got a collection of users. If I expand it, this is my current user ID. So this would be like in my diagram that I had here, this would be equivalent to like, you know, user one, two, three. This is the ID of the currently logged in user. So I can expand this. That user has a collection of employees and inside of there is an employee with ID dash KTTP blah 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 and their name is Jane with a phone number 555 in a shift of Monday. Yes, that is exactly what we wanted, perfect. This is great progress. Uh, just to be really clear, now hopefully it makes a little bit more sense what's going on with those rules that we had added. So this user ID right here, this is the currently authenticated user. So the rules that we set up means if any user logs in without an ID of NGATN blah blah blah, they should not have access to any of the data sitting inside of this little bucket right here. So only the user with NGAT blah 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 is going to have access to this collection of employees and any other data that we add in here as well. All right, this is great progress. Let's take a quick break. Uh, and then it looks like we've still got this big red error message here. We still need to make sure that we navigate our user back to the employee list screen. So let's take care of that in the next section.